I am Slick Nick. And here is where I'm at in my journey, in case you haven't been keeping up with these videos religiously enough. I am sort of stepping away from keto to some extent. My current routine and strategy is more so vegetarian, pescatarian, more so vegetarian than anything. I mean, I'm consuming a lot of complete protein every day. I'm averaging 159 grams of complete protein and I weigh currently about 157. So I'm actually exceeding in grams of complete protein how much I weigh in pounds. And that's the goal, that's the goal. I'm doing that while remaining in a caloric deficit somewhere between 1700 and 1900 calories on the average day. And that's not counting the fact I'm burning calories by doing an average of 45 minutes at the gym six days a week and walking an average of 30 minutes a day, seven days a week. So those calories, I'm not even counting as far as them countering what I'm consuming in food. So I'd say numbers wise, I'm in a good place. I'm not in too much of a deficit where I might lose muscle mass, but I'm consuming just enough to still build muscle while still trying to burn fat when that's the whole concept of body recomposition. So as I'm stepping away from keto a little bit, because now I'm focusing more on fiber, which is still low carbs, but what I've learned is this, if I'm going to have only between 1700 and 1900 calories a day and bring in 159 grams of protein and have at least 30 grams of fiber, because that's why I'm justifying carbs now, then what that's going to mean is I'm going to have less of a, I'm going to have less of an allowance, I guess I should say, for fat, which keto, fat's number one. Well now, fat's kind of the afterthought, but it's okay because, you know, I'm a fat addict. I love eating fat. It's my, it's my favorite of all the macros. However, I'm able to incorporate it in a way that works for me. But what I've learned is for the most part, I'm counting fat as more of a seasoning. So think of it like this. So, you know, what are some forms of fat that I can throw in my meals? So, uh, well, for one, I start out my day with just a teaspoon of this, 40 calories for, of pure coconut oil. So I've got that going on, right? I still, I cook my four eggs with a tablespoon of this. That's 120 calories of, of pure fat. And then if I do have like a baked potato, a small baked potato, I'll put at least a teaspoon of this. This is olive oil. So olive oil, avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, you know, being keto has taught me fat's okay, but now I'm just making it work in the, in the calories restriction there. So I've got my fat there throughout the day, so that's good on all three of my meals. And then I have my yogurt three times a day also. And, you know, here's my yogurt. It's 100 grams, 100 calories per serving, 15, uh, 18 grams of protein. And then I'll put some kind of fruit in there to get my fiber whether it's a banana or raspberries or cherries or blueberries, blackberries, low calories, high fiber. And uh, in that though, I'll find some kind of fat to add in there, season it. So it's just like when I make my eggs, when I'm seasoning the eggs, I put Himalayan salt and I put pepper in there, I'm seasoning it. It's so light, I'm not measuring it, but yet I'm not putting too much in because then it would mess up the flavor. I use that same concept when it comes to seasoning my yogurt with fat. So for example, and this fat that you see is pretty much also fiber too. So for example, almonds, when I put some of these in my yogurt, okay? Now if I were to do a full serving, that'd be four grams of fiber, but it'd also be 170 calories for a quarter cup. So I, don't, I know this is just kind of peripheral fiber for me, but for the taste of it, just a little bit of sprinkle in there, right? Chia seeds, instead of doing a full serving, I do about a third, but this is fiber and it is fat. Cacao nuts is another that goes in this category. This is also very high in fiber, high in fat too, uh, high in calories. That's why I just do a little. I do a little bit to sustain me in conjunction with the oils. And also too, with the cottage cheese, this is something I don't skimp on. Whereas with the Greek yogurt, I'm now actually going with the zero fat just because I can get so much protein for 100 calories. So just for example, look at this. This Oikos, it's 100 calories for three quarters of a cup. It's 18 grams of protein for 100 calories. The only thing better than that is to go with the IsoPure. Uh, with this, it's 100 calories and 25 grams of protein. However, 
this is going to have some probiotic activity to it. So I definitely, and you can easily eat it with some nuts and fruit. What that is just powder. So I do mix it into my third serving of, of yoga, but that's ultimately a supplement, whereas this is not. And then also, for example, if I'm having a big salad full of spinach and greens, I maybe sprinkle in some Parmesan cheese. Cheese is something where very sparingly because it's not necessarily right. It doesn't necessarily help my fiber content necessarily does it. Let's check this out for sure to be sure. Do I even see any fiber? I don't, I don't. Not to say that cheese doesn't have fiber, but specifically the kind I'm eating does not. But I'm not, I know that. So uh, ultimately I'm able to still have fat throughout the day. Compared to my former days of just being able to eat tons of bacon, but I'm considering also having four eggs a day. And there's, as far as calories go, there's just about as much fat as there is protein in eggs. So you can see that I'm, I've, made, I've found a way to incorporate fat all throughout my day, from the beginning of the day when I put in my NC2 oil and my coffee, uh, to even the end of the day, my last thing that I'm actually eating, which is my yogurt, but I'm putting some kind of nuts or cacao or chia seeds in there. So in my meal plan, we ultimately see absolutely a tribute to keto in that it's still really low carbs because it's high fiber. Uh, we also see that I'm not afraid of fat. I mean, if, you, if we were looking at my cholesterol intake from a traditional point of view where we think cholesterol is evil, then I would be breaking lots of rules with my four eggs alone. That would already bother a lot of people. Not to mention my double serving of full fat cottage cheese. Because when I looked at low fat cottage cheese, the calories weren't much different. So I'm like, I might as well have good cottage cheese. I don't mind with the yogurt because I'm adding fat into it in the form of nuts and seeds, which I need already, along with, along with the fruit. So that works out. But ultimately, that's how I think about it now. And largely what you've seen me describe is, for the most part, vegetarian. The only thing that keeps it from that makes me pescatarian is the 30 grams of tuna. But ultimately, and I, I still may have salmon every once in a while, or, or I'm not opposed to eating meat, but for the most part, all of this content you see, this 1,700 to 1,900 calories a day, this 159 grams of complete protein, what you're seeing is for the most part vegetarian. Eggs, it's actually vegetarian. Whey and dairy, vegetarian. Just this, this is the only thing that even makes it pescatarian. So it's pretty cool how largely plant-based I've returned back to, and I always love being plant-based. I love being vegan even. However, I want to find the most efficient version that's gonna allow me to continue the process of body recomposition as a 40-year-old man to continue to burn more body fat and build more muscle. Your comments belong right here.